Hey guys, my name is Caitlin and welcome back to my channel. Now, I'm a little bit late to be uploading my September wrap up, I know, but I really wanted to talk about some of the books that I read last month and I started filming it a little bit late. <laughs> but anyway, a total of 24 books were attempted, and I say attempted because there were a few DNFs um, in the month of September. And last month in my wrap up, I just kind of spoke about every single book that I read in the order that I read them. And when I was going through the editing process, I was like, wow, I'm really not giving a about half of these books that I'm talking about. And I didn't really want to do that again. So we're going to start with my five star reads today, work my way down to the fours. And when we get to like the threes, the twos, the DNFs, that kind of stuff, I'm not really going to go into much depth. I might just give you a couple of tropes and then tell you why I didn't like it. <laughs> Starting with my five star reads, the first that we have is actually a series. So I reread the Temptation series by Ella Frank this month just because I was really craving some Logan and Tate. You know, like I read this series for the first time back in July, so it hadn't been that long, but. I think I just read, you know, a couple of books that I wasn't really sinking into in a row and I was like, I want some Logan to Tate. <laughs> I did talk about the Temptation series in my MM series rec, so if I remember I'll leave a card up here so you guys can go have a look at that if you want, but I'll sum it up for you here anyway. So one of our main characters, Logan Mitchell, really loves sex. He has it with men and women alike, and now he's set his eyes on Tate. Now, Tate has just come out of a four-year, very toxic marriage, so the last thing that he wants is a relationship, let alone the unwavering attention of Logan Mitchell, because when Logan wants something, he's not gonna stop till he gets it. Night after night, Tate is just fending off Logan's advances until one explosive night between them at the bar where Tate works has Tate thinking things about Logan that he never thought he would ever think about another man. This series is rather low angst. Um, there's such great communication between Logan and Tate. Like, it's actually one of the best books I've read for communication. Like, just talk things out, people. It also covers sexual awakening. That is a pretty prevalent topic in this series but absolutely loved it. So counting the Temptation series as a whole, I only had two books that I rated five stars this month, the second one being Psycho by Only James, which is the second book in the Necessary Evils series. This book and this series is incredibly addicting, like, and it was one of my anticipated releases for the second half of 2021 as well. I have already promised myself that as soon as this series is complete, I am going to go back and binge the entire thing because I just can't wait to be able to do that. August Mulvaney lives a little bit of a double life. He is a brilliant professor, he's got a photographic memory, so he just remembers so many things, but he's also a ruthless killer trying to right the wrongs of a failing justice system, so a little bit of vigilante action going on here. And then we have our other main character, Lucas Blackwell, and he was the golden child of the FBI. He was a secret clairvoyant who can kind of figure things out by touching people or things and get images or a sense of things and then he accidentally finds out that one of his co-workers at the FBI is actually uh, a serial killer and when he tried to tell his supervisors they thought he was insane and put him in an asylum and now his co-worker wants him dead so Lucas has kind of retreated to August's school to try and regroup and get away from this guy but then he runs into August literally and figures out that August is also a killer. So always has a little bit of a problem now because no one is meant to know what he does and normally that would kind of be the time to put an end to Lucas but he is way too curious about the man who's running away from him and is very determined to be a part of his life. I feel like I just went on a bit of a tangent. I'm so sorry. This is one of my favorite reads of 2021. It is so sexy. It's so funny. Like Lucas and August's characters are written to perfection and just the entire Mulvaney family, like, just from reading book one of this series, you're like, I am immediately drawn into this whole family. I want to know the love story of every single one of the Mulvaney brothers, and I can't wait to do it. This book does have its fair share of violence, though, so maybe just be aware of that before heading into it. Moving on to my four-star reads, this is actually where a majority of the books that I read this month fall into, so I had a very good reading month. My first four-star read this month was Encore by Eden Finley, so this was another one of my anticipated releases for 2021, and it's also the conclusion of her famous series. Jordan and Blake are filming a movie together, which is a little bit out of Blake's comfort zone since he is a straight man playing a gay character. Then when a PR scandal hits, the two of them have to go into hiding. Their movie 
movie is put on hold and Jordan comes up with this brilliant plan that to sink further into their characters they're going to try method acting. But to everyone's surprise, Blake kind of sinks into his role a little bit more than anyone expected and it is a really good read. I absolutely loved the banter between our two characters. I feel like a majority of my highlights in this book were just like them being sarcastic toward one another, but I think my other favourite element was the friends to lovers. It was so well written and Jordan's character is kind of like the perfect blend of cocky without being an asshole. I did give this book a 4.5 out of stars. 4.5 out of stars. I'm sorry, I just hallucinated. Just because it didn't have that oomph to push it over the line to a 5 for me and also there were a couple of scenes that I would have liked to be expanded a little bit more but I think I'm definitely going to be rereading this book and this series in the future because I loved it so much more than I thought I would. Next we have another series and I rated all of the books in this trilogy 4 stars which is why I grouped it together. So this is the Men of Summer series by Lauren Blakely. I was filming a reading vlog while I was reading this book. It's the most recent one that I've got on my channel so if I remember I'll link it down below or up here or somewhere if you want to check out my more in-depth thoughts and my reactions while I was reading. Declan has been playing professional baseball for five years and he has one unbreakable rule when it comes to men that he does not date another baseball player. But Declan kind of wants to throw that rule out the window when rookie Grant comes onto the scene. He is so confident, so sexy, so talented, but also off limits. At least until Grant confides in Declan that he is actually a virgin and he wants Declan to be the one to remedy that. The instantaneous connection between Declan and Grant is one of my favourite things about this book and this series because you can see that like the instant attraction and connection that they have with one another does not fade throughout the entire three books. If anything, it gets stronger and I loved it so much. The first book is also such a good example of like, I'm going to try and resist you until I physically can't stop myself anymore and I was living for it. I think the main reason that I gave these books a four stars and not a five because I definitely really enjoyed them is that when I went into it I honestly thought that it was just a standalone. I mean I knew that there were three books but I thought that each book was going to cover a different couple in the same world so heading into book two and realizing that it was the same characters kind of threw me off a little bit and so I felt like the story dragged simply because I thought it was just going to be one book which is completely on me. My rating does not reflect the writing style for these books. I absolutely loved it. It was just because I went into it thinking that it was going to be one book and that was it and I think if I were to go back and reread these books my rating could potentially change but for now this is where it stands. My next four star read is Relay by Leigh Lorraine. This is book one in her Changing Lanes series. I think it's a trilogy, but I haven't read the other two yet. They're still on my TBR. Alex and Dane are both on the US Olympic swimming team, but not a lot of people know that the animosity between them doesn't stem from competitiveness, but from the fact that 10 years ago when they were 16, they were together and didn't really have a very happy ending and haven't spoken to each other till now. The two are clashing both in and out of the pool and if they want the team to be able to gel in time to compete in the Olympics then something has to give. This is an enemies to lovers, Olympic swimmers, athlete romance and it's also a second chance romance so if any of those elements appeal to you I would 100% recommend picking this book up. I absolutely loved watching Alec and Dane reconcile after a decade apart and I loved seeing Dane just come into himself as a man and as a character, like the character development on his side of this story was phenomenal. Now I've mentioned that I'm not the biggest fan of second chance romance tropes, so while that did affect my rating a little bit, there were also some things throughout the story that I was a little bit iffy on um, that also affected my rating. My next two four star reads are both part of the same series, but they can be read as standalones, so I'll go through them individually. So book one is Stealing Ronan by Isabel Lucero, and it is the first book in the South River University series. Renzo never thought he'd be the kind of guy who lusts after his sister's boyfriend, but that is exactly what happens when Ronan walks through his front door, like someone just plucked him out of his deepest fantasies and just put him directly in his path. If crushing on his sister's straight boyfriend wasn't bad enough, things take a turn for the interesting when Ronan comes on a family Christmas trip with them and the two of them get snowed in together for 48 hours alone. I was in a bit of a reading slump when I found this series and the premise of it was just enough to pull me out of it. I really loved this book. It was so addicting. It was so fun and it's not a full length novel either so it completely flew by. All of the characters were so well written and so lovable except for Chris. Chris. We don't like him. He can 
piss off. Renzo is such a flirt from the beginning of this book. Ronan is a sweetheart. Violet, Renzo's sister, is such a smartass and I actually couldn't wait to delve into her story, which is different for me because I haven't read an MF romance in such a long time. Moving on to our next four star, which is in the same series also by Isabel Lucero and that is Tempting Him. So this is book four in the South River series. Jay is in his final year of college when he gets a phone call from his father saying he needs to cut out the partying and after spring break he is going to be starting an internship that his dad has set up for him. Until Monday, Jay is going to have some fun, which is why he doesn't hesitate to approach the older attractive man sitting by himself at the bar for a one night only night of passion. <laughs> when Jay wakes up alone in bed next to a note that guarantees that this was a one time only thing and they are never going to see each other again, he takes it in stride until he rocks up to his internship on Monday morning and realizes that the guy that he slept with is not only his boss, and the head of the company he's interning for, he's also a good friend of his dad's. This book is actually the one that I found this series from, but I loved the premise of the whole series that I just wanted to go back and start from book one. I loved reading about our main characters, I loved the drama, I loved the communication between them, and this book is such a good example of where the main characters are like, we know that this is wrong, but it feels so right and we just cannot stay away from each other. It was so good. Next is another reread for me and that is Filthy Little Secret by Devin McCormack. After breaking up with his cheating ex, Mark turns to rebound sex with the campus drug dealer Tim and he knows that Tim has broken quite a few hearts in his time on campus so his one rule is simple, do not catch feelings. Besides, it's just rebound sex what's gonna happen, but neither of them are prepared for just how intense and how passionate and just how extreme their connection is after that one night that they cannot stay away from each other. The longer that they remain each other's filthy little secret, the more they realize that their hearts might be at risk the longer that they stay in whatever the hell this is. I enjoyed this book just as much as I did the first time around and I feel like character development is such a prevalent part of this story. Like when you compare our main characters at the beginning and the end of this book, there is such a dramatic shift that it's like, how the hell did this happen in one book? This is a steamy as hell college romance with no cliffhangers and no cheating, as well as a guaranteed happily ever after. My last four star read this month is Drilled by K.M. Newhold, and this was the seventh and final book in the Four Bears construction series. Ridge and Apollo were best friends until Ridge left Apollo's sister at the altar on their wedding day, and then they never spoke for 15 years. Now they both work with the same construction company, and they found themselves being sent to a remote campground alone, just the two of them, to rebuild these cabins. This is a forced proximity, best friends to enemies to lovers romance. This book was definitely enjoyable. I really loved seeing our characters connect, but again, it's a second chance romance trope, which isn't my favorite. And also the fact that they spent 15 years not talking to each other. I know a lot of people love second chance romances, but for this book in particular, it was just such a bad case of miscommunication that like, if the characters had have just spoken when they had the opportunity, and they did have the opportunity, then all of this could have been solved, and like they wouldn't have wasted 15 years pining after one another when they could have been together this whole time. Like, I know that not a lot of people see second chance romances like that, but that's how I felt pretty much the entire time reading this book. I'm like, you guys literally feel the same. If you could have just spoken to one another, literally at any point within the past 15 years, then we wouldn't be here right now. You guys could have been happy so long ago. <laughs> and I think that's my thing. It's like, they could have been happy so long ago and they've just been like, not sad, but drifting for 15 years because they haven't had each other. And some people might think that's romantic, that they finally came back to one another in the end. And I'm like, just talk to each other. <laughs> all right, those were all of my four and five star reads. From here on out, it's three and below. So I'm just gonna give you guys the main tropes and then maybe a sentence or two on why I didn't like it. If the tropes sound interesting to you, I'll try and remember to link all of the books down below so that you can go check them out for yourself. So on to our three star reads. First is Out of the Penalty Box by Genevieve Chambly. This is a fast paced novella, a hockey romance, teammates to lovers featuring awakened sexuality. The writing style in the beginning of this book sounds 
sounded really good, but then since it's only a novella, it was so rushed and just really quick paced that one thing happened after the other and then it was over. Next is Tasting Innocence by Isabel Lucero. This is book two in the South River University series. This is a best friend sister novel and it also features a first time scene. The fact that this is the first MF romance that I've read in a while probably had something to do with my rating, but it also just felt like there wasn't really a lot of emotional depth to their relationship. It read really physical um, and I feel like that's the other reason I didn't really enjoy it too much. Next is Breaking Free also by Isabel Lucero. This is book three in the same series. This is a frat party hookup turned college athlete teammate romance. It's an enemies to lovers. I wasn't a big fan of one of our main characters in this book. I understood where he was coming from when he was making certain points but I feel like the way he said them came across rather dickish a lot. So he grew on me toward the end, like the very end, um, but yeah I just didn't really like him for a majority of the book, I'm sorry. Next is The Friendship Equation by J.R. Gray. I also spoke about this one in my recent reading vlog and went very into depth about my thoughts on it. This is a childhood best friends to lovers, uh, buy for you. It's a forbidden athlete romance between swimmers. I didn't really connect with either of our main characters and so I didn't really care where the story went. I was just kind of along for the ride. I also didn't really see the transition from friends to lovers. I feel like it was just with one conversation. It was like, bam, we're hooking up now. That's it. End of story. See you later. And my last three star read for this month was Sink by Zyla Levin, which I also spoke about in the same reading vlog. I read a lot of books in that vlog. This was a Fated Mates, um, Touch Aversion Turned to Bliss When Touching Your Mate. It's a Hurt Comfort. And I just felt like so many important things were glossed over in this book. Like, it was interesting and I was invested. So many major aspects of the plot were just kind of here it is, moving on. And they'd focus on something totally irrelevant. And I'm like, okay, cool, that's great. I didn't actually have any two or one star reads this month, but I did have three DNFs. And I DNF them all for the same reason, and that's just because the writing style wasn't for me. So I won't delve into the blurbs or anything. Uh, the first book that I DNF'd was Ignite by Rebecca James, which just read a little young for me. That could also be because I went into it straight after reading the Temptation series, which is a very well-written novel, so there was just a bit of difference in writing style there. The second was Will and Patrick Wake Up Married by Lita Blake, which is a rom-com, but I find I can't really sink into rom-coms. I'm just not a big fan of the writing style in a majority of them. And the third was Five Dares by Eli Easton, which again, just read a little bit young. Anyway, my battery has been flashing at me for like the past 10 minutes of filming, so I hope I can make it through this outro. Those are all the books that I read in the month of September. Please let me know down below if you've read them or if you plan to or if they're on your TBR at all. I'm trying to rush through this and I'm forgetting what I'm saying. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and hit that subscribe button down below if you'd like to see similar content. My name is Caitlin. I will see you guys in next week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.